about the day that I broke relationship. It was about third or fourth grade, and I remember it very vividly. And I decided that um, I wanted God to be at an arm's distance away from me. And that was a course change in my life. Now, I didn't turn my back on God, but the sep- the, it was too close. I, wanted, I needed some separation. And the reason I got to that point was through a series of events that uh, took place in my life leading up to that point. Um, so as I'm moving down the road of life, going through my high school years, into college, it um, becomes clear that I've got these two governing um, principles, these two guidelines, I call them, of how to approach life. Number one, I didn't want to make the mistakes of my parents. I think probably everybody out there has, at some point in time, decided in your heart, I don't want to do that. I want to make new mistakes. That's a good thing. The second thing I wanted to do, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't um, ever at a place where I would cross the line into sin. I always wanted to be on the right side of the fence with God. And whatever I did, I made sure that I could see that fence line so I wouldn't cross over it. So as I get to college, um, I start to see that I'm hitting failure after failure. Uh, I can't have breakthrough in certain areas. There are certain things that I just can't overcome. Things aren't working for me. At the same time, I'm being bombarded right and left by the anti-God establishment in the university. And frankly, I don't know enough about what I believe to stand up for it. And that really upset me. So I come to a crux in the road where I see that I need some changes. What I didn't understand at the time was that I was beginning to look at my worldview. I had no idea what a worldview was, but I was beginning to look at it and question it and see the fissures and the fractures in it. And I knew I had to change it because it wasn't working. About this time frame, my brothers both went separately on different uh, mission trips. And on those mission trips, God nailed them. And they both came back totally changed. I mean, from the inside out. And they had decided to pursue God wholeheartedly. And the fruit was in their life for it. Well, I decided that I wanted to do the same thing. So I went all, all in after God. I read the Bible in a year. I was praying. I started immersing myself in the thing of God. And what I started doing through that is I was pulling out those weak areas of my worldview, and I was beginning to fill them back in with what God said about that, and I began to see fruit in it. So as I'm progressing through life, this is years, um, what happens is I continue to dump myself into the things of God. I, I set myself in a place where I can be mentored and discipled by men who have gone down the road ahead of me, who have already done it, men who can hold me accountable, men who can teach me things that I don't know. And my worldview gets stronger and stronger. One day as I'm pondering things, I see that I have been looking at things very differently. And as I'm reconstructing my worldview, the meaning of life hits me square in the face. That God has created us to love him, and he has created us to be in relationship with him. That is it. Everything flows outside of that. But that's where it starts. And so I started thinking about what is love? Okay, love is something that has to be given out of volition. I cannot take love from you. You cannot take it from me. I have to willingly make a choice to give it to you. So in order for us to love God, he has to give us free will. So he gives us free will. Well, in order to use free will, we have to choose. So we come down to whatever I do out of my free will is a choice that I make. And that choice either loves God and edifies my relationship with God, or on the reverse, it destroys that which he says is hatred towards him. So we have a very big dichotomy here. So I come to the conclusion that God is all about choices. God is pro-choice. He created us to choose him. In that, he's given us the ability and really the mandate to choose everything. 
And everything goes back to that. Now he has also set conditions. He has told us one choice will lead to life, one choice will lead to death. He gives us everything we need in the scriptures and in nature, from that matter, to show us what the correct choice is and what the incorrect choice is. So I'm reconstructing my worldview here. Now let me tell you another story. Uh, this one is about two teenage kids. She's 14, he's 16. They meet at a mutual family event. They take a liking to each other. They spend time together. Weeks turn into months. Puppy love turns into something else. And they really truly fall in love with each other. And they spend as much time together as they can. Well, in this time, they begin to make choices and they go down the slippery slope of sexual immorality. We all know how slippery that slope is. And one day, they get hit square in the eyes by the very fact that they have a child on the way. Keep in mind, she's 14, he's 16, he's a budding varsity star, she's just starting high school. The, imm the immensity of this event in their lives is huge. So they get counsel, they get, um, they get help, they try to figure out whatever, whatever they can do. Who can we talk to? How can we get help? Overwhelmingly, there's evidence that there's probably an easy way out of this. Uh, they don't have schooling yet. They don't have careers. They don't have money. They don't know anything about anything. They're kids. This is a, this is a life changer. Relationships can be shattered or destroyed, permanently impaired. Um, they're starting from less than zero, essentially. And so they have a choice to make. Do we take the easy way out? We could have an abortion. Or do we do what our, our God tells us to do? They're Christians. He says that we're accountable for what we do. We have choices we can make. He says this. My world says this. At some point in their lives, somebody, people, and society had put something into their worldview that said you are responsibility, have a responsibility for the choices you make. You have a responsibility to carry out whatever it is that comes from the choices you make. That was put in them. Individually, they decided, I want to see this thing through. And they came together and they decided, we want to see this thing through. So, what they do, they get married, the first step. And they decide, you know, we want to do whatever we can to build a life for this child as whatever it costs us. We want to, we want to make it good. We want to do this. And so on February 15th, 1978, I was born. As they're making this new thing happen, this new world come together, they go back to their decision. We want to do whatever we can. My dad worked multiple jobs. My mom wasn't able to, to go back to school. She had to get her GED. But they continued, and they made more choices. I had two younger brothers within the next four years. And we go through life. Later in life, more things happen. It's life. Choices take place. And the three of us boys find ourselves in a broken family. This is about third grade or so. Go back to the day that I broke that relationship. It was a choice on their behalf that led to a choice on my behalf. So I'm flashback to the future. I'm reconstructing my worldview. I'm thinking about this thing. And when I think about the choice they made, I realize that my existence stood on a knife edge of decision. Two teenagers who didn't know anything about anything made a choice that impacted my existence forever. I would not be standing here today talking to you. I would not have affected whoever I have affected in this world, accomplished what I have accomplished, the things I have yet to do. My two daughters, who you saw uh, earlier, would not be here. My brother's beautiful families would not be here because of one choice. And that choice was made not on their guidelines, but on God's guidelines. 
So my guidelines are his. Going back to this, looking at my own guidelines, the one was good. I didn't want to make the mistake of my parents. But what I had done is I had taken God out of that. I wasn't going to make the mistakes. Not, God, you make sure that I don't make the mistakes because I'm going to press into you and I'm going to know exactly what you want. Secondly, I was looking for that fence line. I didn't want to cross into sin. Well, what God showed me is that the moment I was looking for the fence line, I had already crossed into sin because sin is in the heart. Sin begins in that heart. And it was the day that I decided I didn't want to know God, but I wanted to know God, that that changed. It's a heart thing. Love comes from the heart. So my guidelines are his guidelines. What guidelines do you have that have been put in place through events in your past, through reactions to things, through your own volition, and how are those working? Are they God's guidelines or are they your guidelines? This is an ultrasound of my daughter, my firstborn, just a few weeks old. When I'm at this point, how do I make my decision? What guidelines am I using to make that decision? Can I see this in relation to that? And can I see what's beyond this in relation to this decision? These decisions that we make have a huge impact. What God has shown me about love and choice is that they're inseparable. You know, one of the greatest arguments you hear against Christianity is how could I serve a God who allows a world as terrible as we have? Who, we have so many work, terrible things. We have people that do terrible things to other people. How could I serve a God who allows that? Well, I'll tell you the truth of that is that we live in a world that is the summation of the choices that we have made. The choices of those people that have come before us, the choices we make today, and the choices that those who come behind us will make tomorrow, those are what this world is made of. Now, we have an enemy, Satan, who comes and he capitalizes on every single one of those choices. And he does everything to, he can to influence the choices that we're making. So I submit to you that our world is a product of our will today and not God's will. He is a redeeming God and he comes in and he has redeemed my family I'm sure he's redeemed a lot of your families. He's operating in the middle of this because he loves us so much to give us free will. What can one choice lead to? For my family, at this point in time, we have three generations. And what comes beyond that? Two beautiful daughters. How do I know what God has outside of this? I have no clue. I just know what he's done in my life, and I know that if I use what he says, or, my, or his guidelines, I will be successful. Proverbs 69 says that in a man's heart, he just sets his course, but the Lord directs his steps. So you set your course based on what God says, and watch him direct your steps. Who has God planned for this person to be? What decisions will she make? Who will she impact? Who will she help? Who will she change? What impact is she going to have on the world? I tell you, this little girl, she has such a heart. She has a compassionate heart that will change the world. I have no idea how, but it will. One of my favorite pictures. My two daughters, Annalisa, she wants to be a rock star. You know, we all have had this question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm still trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. She wants to be a rock star, but, you know, if that doesn't work out, she'll work at Dion's. She's good with that. <laughs> Sophia, she wants to be a kitty vet. And I tell you what, she's got 50 kitties right now on her bed. She's, she's heading the right direction. She also knows that her sister could be the president because she's bossy enough. <laughs> what I'm getting at here is they have an idea what they want to be, but they have no clue what God has created them to be yet. I have no clue but God has created them to be and the impact that they will have on the world. And I am only here to ponder that because of a decision that my parents made when I was a little something in the womb. The imprint of God. So, as I close, I want to leave you with some quotes. One of my favorites is from Gladiator. It says, What we do in life echoes in eternity. And that is a picture of 
whatever we set our hearts to, whatever decisions we make, the things we say, it has a lasting impact whether we choose to see it or not. This is one of my own that I've put together. Every choice that we make creates ripples in the pond and another thread in the spider web of the world. You think about each one of you out there making choices. Those choices are ripples in the pond that hit other ripples, that hit other ripples, and all of these ripples come together and affect each other. Same thing with a spider web. I have one thread in the web. Everybody else has a thread, and all those intersect and create the world that we live in. And lastly, out of Deuteronomy, and this could be a sermon series in itself of why it is where it is in the Ten Commandments, God says that he will punish the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him, but he will show love to a thousand generations. I'm on three. A thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. This takes us right back to the meaning of life right here. We have love and we have hate. Those who love me, who pursue me, who do what I tell them to do based on my guidelines and not their own, they will see love for a thousand generations. They will see my blessing poured upon them. Those who don't, it goes beyond you. In closing, make sure that you live a life that brings life no matter the cost. For all you know, the choice you make today could change the world tomorrow. Thank you.